Global Rugby Challenge regular season wraps up here today for our final match of the round robin. The Guardians of the Crypt will be up against the Scarlets in a match that has a lot riding on it for the home side. What are they doing next week? No one knows. We'll find out after 18 minutes. Hello everyone and welcome along to Cool Flag Strip, your home of Rugby Challenge 3 and the subscriber series, the Global Rugby Challenge, the series where you guys take the field against the world's elite. So we've got four subscriber sides heading into the top six, which are the teams that go through into the playoffs. The rest of the teams will be gone after today. Most likely one of those to be gone will be the Scarlets. Before the Guardians, there's a lot riding on this match as we spoke about just before. They can finish anywhere from second to fourth. Currently, they sit in that fourth position with the game in hand, of course. Um, but second, we'll see them have a course next round off as one of the top two qualifiers. If they don't pip that spot though, the Dragons will take it and the Guardians will have to play a preliminary final match where they will have to play three knockout games instead of two. They haven't been in fancy form either, the Guardians. Their last game was only a 17-7 win over Toulon. They'll be wanting to really pick it up from that matchup. The team has undergone a few changes. The front row, however, has stayed the same with Luke Dromaville, Mike Hunt and Owen Fagan along the front with Josh Howard, new partner to Michael Shepard. Ollie Crabb will start at six with Kevin Marshall on the open side and Jake Waller lining up at number eight. Ken Lynch will once again start at nine with Tom Butler, the leading point scorer, at fly half. A centre pairing which is looking dangerous and creative at the same time between Simone Dominguez and Tom Guest at 13. Kieran Jones returns to the wing where he is absolutely devastating. And on the right will be Elliot Malpass with James Garner at fullback for the Guardians. Well, we speak about the Guardians not being too convincing in recent form. The Scarlets, they've probably been the opposite. A good win. A, a regular season win that they haven't seen too many of throughout the season as well. Over Wasps was their last result, 32 points to 26. Only their third victory of the season so far. The Scarlet started off the year in atrocious fixtures devastation, taking on three of the four subscriber sides inside the opening four weeks. Could you start with the worst fixtures list in a competition? I do not think so. Since then, they've struggled to really gather any weight behind their form, and as a result, we just said three wins over the season. They rounded out here today against the Guardians of the Crib. Again, a side that promises they could do a few things. Half penny at the back, Petchel at fly half, Parks, Davis, McNichol, and Smith. The back line does look like it could cause trouble, but it's probably in the forwards where they don't quite shine like some others. Lee and Jones, the props definitely have some talent. Ball, another internationally capped second rower. Shingler, Barkley, definitely of the calibre that can threaten sides around the world. But as a unit, as a team, they have struggled to fire this season, season two of the Global Rugby Challenge. So it'll be Scarlets who will kick off the matchup. They're playing, of course, in the home strip. They're red, but it's the Guardians who have switched stuff up a bit. They've gone with the uh, blue and red, normally a bit more blue, and they kept the white shorts to uh, trade the kit clash that we seem to have quite a lot in these series. On the way we are, Malpass has taken the ball up for the first time and finding Howard to his left. Not one who really wants to do much kicking and he finds Jake Waller away to do the damage back. Dominguez fires it away. Kieran Jones! First bomb pop of the match from Kieran Jones. Police. That's how he operates. They keep it tight. Don Butler. Oh, and Luke to Normanville. Here's the big loose head prop. Thundering down the sideline. He takes on the fullback and half and he pulls him down. Lynch. Away to Crab. No one home. And it's picked up by McNichol. And they get a bit fancy here. The Scarlet's going to go wide. And away they go. Harpenny breaking away from the Normanville. But at the back. James Garner shuts that door really quickly. What a start. The two sides definitely not shying away from a bit of attacking rugby. The Guardians, of course, they need to win this to secure that second spot as Butler finds a little bit of a hole and he slides through it, glides through it almost. 
Ford kicking away, looking for territory. That's close to the sideline. And Kieran Jones was very close to putting the pressure on the Scarlet's defence there. But that's gone dead in goal. Crouch. Which does, does give the Scarlet's a bit of a chance to force Sit. this upfield as Michael Schumann is utterly uncomfortable in that scrum. And the Guardians get a great hit there. Way waiting for the chance. And they have bulldozed past the Scarlet. Now Jake Waller. Bit of a short side run. Puts it out the back and... Tom Guest has to struggle for it, but he's lost it, and it's come away, and a terrible little ball from Davis, looking to free that up, here's my Hunt, charging out of the 22, gets a few friends there, but they go backwards, and Guest grabs it in again, it's Don Butler, this time, he again chooses to kick, and Elliot Malpass leads a chase with Simone Dominguez, Back towards the Scarlet 22. Oh, great tackle. Release. Malpass chasing hard. And he is in one who knows his way around the back row too. Great pass away back. It goes to second row of Price. Release. And the support there of Lee. They secure the ball quickly. Popped up from Davis. Away it goes outside. And they continue to run Barkley. Numbers here on the right if they want to use them. But they don't. Great tackle once again. Kieran Jones on the fence doing work. Is they continue edge? to go short side, and that's a terrible pass. An equally bad catch. And Michael Shepard just says, here you go. Have the ball. We've got advantage. And the mistake coming from Hadley Parks. It was a bit easy, wasn't it, really? Crouch. And it was... Bind. A milk penalty, Sit. you could say. <laughs> Scrum has been strong for the Guardians. Already seen them dominate the Scarlets once. Can they do it again? Well, this one's a bit more steady. Scarlets are really sort themselves out after that one early scrum, and Lynch will go straight away to Dominguez, who looked for Butler but couldn't find him out there. They continue to throw it to no one, and Malpass back to Fagan, and the big tight hit prop this time goes charging on through. Shepard, Butler. Again, a loose ball to Marshall. Dominguez gets it out to Walla. That's more like it. And another loose ball. The Guardians look all at sea here. They are not selling it all well to Knights. Line outs for the Scarlets. And they're taking their time here. Finally, they throw it into the middle and Price pulls it down. Now, again, it's very dysfunction. They're both these sides very slow to really get any structure Advantage. going at all. Now to knock on and Hunt's pulling in. My cut! Oh, look at him go! The grossy little hooker Release. goes into the 22 off the back of a mistake. Yes. The way to Dominguez. Dominguez. Oh, he shows it. That was a bit fancy. And it looks like the Scarlets might turn this over. They do. Well, a golden opportunity there for the Guardians of the Crib. And a great tackle Police. there of Richard Smith. Goes down in the heap. But oh, a penalty. Oh, the ref having none of that. And I think that's Kevin Marshall who has been pinged for not releasing the ball or the player on the ground after the tackle. And half penny goes for touch. And he finds it. It's Josh Howard tried to keep that one in the field of play. What a bizarre match we've had so far in this one. The Guardians desperate for a big win here to put themselves into second. As Hughes throws and hits his man as well. It's the same one. Price has been the target. It's almost been a match of slow motion. Neither side really getting into the game at all. And this one close to the sideline. Oh, come on, Rev. That ball was well and truly out. Really got to make a better habit of letting those balls slide into touch. A terrible call from the TMO. And Hughes and the Scarlets have a great chance. That wasn't straight at all. They're driving on the back of ball. Now they pick it up. Use the back line. Barkley away it goes. And there's a huge hole. And through they go. Scarlet score on the stroke of halftime. Petchel threading the needle. And the opening try goes to Boyd. The number eight. What's this? I'm sure it's Patchell. Barkley 
This was beautiful work. Pancho putting through his number eight. That was the real key interest there, was the work of Barkley. Oh, that was extraordinary. Took out two defenders, and the Guardians trail in a game where neither side can really go to halftime happy with the performance. The lead is nice to have, but goodness me, it has been less than convincing. Here is Halfpenny from right in front. Could have thrown it over, it was that easy. And it is Scarlet who leads 7-0 over the Guardians of the Crib. Wow. Settle yourselves down, everyone. This game could go the difference. Scarlet's having the better of the match so far up on possession and territory. But the Guardians have been so unstructured, so um, static and just not seeming like they know what the game plan is out there at all. There is no one running onto the ball. Passes are all going to ground. It is all a bit up in the sky from the Guardians tonight. Can they recover into the second half? It is 7-0 only, so still not too far to come back into this one. They have made more line breaks. 4-3 to three. and doubling the handing errors as well. It's not been a performance that we have recognised from the Guardians, that is for sure. As they look to battle into that top two, they won't catch the Flakers. But the All Flakes, and especially the Celtic Dragons, are watching this match with interest with a who will keep hold of that second spot. Dragons hold it now. Can the Guardians claw it? It's been a match of performances that we have really not recognised at all. This man on the ball now, Don Butler, normally so cool, calm, collected, and just holds the game together. It's all Howard. That is more like what we know from the Guardians. Now, can they get a bit more going? Can they find the links? They do. It's Gas. Oh, that's a horrible tackle. It's got to be a card. No question. Half but he's gone. And the Scarlets instantly on the back foot. Just like that, the man who has really led the team around the park is gone. And Don Butler, this is what we were just saying. He's cool, calm and collected under pressure. He is the one to lead this team as he has most of the season from the number 10 jumper. And quickly, Mike Hunt throws him the tee and says, put this over, get us back to halfway. We want a full 10 minutes of these guys with only 14 men. 7-3. Instantly, the Guardians create their point of difference by the penalty. Now, if they can score a try with a man in the bin, this game changes drastically. Captain Mike Hunt! Oh, another high tackle! And another yellow card! Oh, wow! I think this is Barkley who's gone now, isn't it? Have a bit of a check who's going off. Yes, it is. Barkley departs. And have you seen anything like this before in your life? Lee Halfpenny. Now John Barkley. They're all dropping like flies to the yellow card. Butler hammers it to the sideline. No fullback. No open side flanker. And the Guardians surely will have the opportunity now to run right and get that fluidity back in the game. Quickly up and down. It goes to Butler. Oh, there's so much room now for Butler. Hits it nicely. Lynch is quickly onto the ball. Guess coming out wide. Elliot Malpass. There's no one at home. And it's an easy run in. The Scarlets have well and truly shot themselves in the foot here. Elliot Malpass dots down his first try of the game and the first for his team as well. The Guardians of the Crib finally hits the five-pointer on the head. Now that is what we talk about. That is what these guys do. They find room. They find support. What happened in the first half, I do not know. But it is different now. Two men in the bin. Confidence is streaming back to the Guardians. And the game is much more on their scale now. Don't think I've seen anything occur quite like 
it has tonight here for the Scarlets, leading 7-0. And they've really bombed it. What damage control can they do before they get Halfpenny and Barkley back? That is the big question. And really, they look at this. And they've got to say, massive missed opportunity. Back to halfway. Johnny McNichol kicks it long and he finds who else but Butler. To make ways, being very quiet. And anyone taking on a defender here is, well, they're going to look up the opportunity of it being a high tackle. Here is Ollie Crabb. Well, he's still going Crabb. They're laying off him. To Normanville goes out wide. Karen Jones winding up the big man. Oh, what a ball. What an offload. Take this and it will go. The outside centre, Tom Guess. Second try. But how about Karen Jones? Out the back of the hand. Look at him. Calmly walks up. Gives him the old fist bump and just says, nice work. Oh, ho, ho, ho. eat that up. That is magical stuff from the big man on the wing. We thought he's all power, but the finesse is well and truly alive. De Mormerville did well to go early. Oh, I could watch that a million times over. It doesn't look anywhere else. It just gets better. Tom Guest, he benefits from a piece of magic. Now we've got Don Butler. Fly half extraordinaire this season to have another shot at two. And what else do you expect? And it's over. Nice and easy. 17-7. How this game changes at an absolute heartbeat. Here come the yellow card players back on the field. Barkley is on. And there we go. Halfpenny returning as well. 20 minutes still to go. This one's not done. 15 on 15. The Scarlet still leads 7 0. I guess you could say that. But um, confidence is a massive part of rugby. And here we go now with the Guardians. Hunts away to Butler. Look at the ball now. It's flowing, is it? Yes, Shepard. And he's still got one man. It is Malpass. Back to Marshall. Kevin Marshall away from Barkley. And Marshall will score the third try. The Guardians are on fire and they are unstoppable. Have you seen a contrasting two halves in all of your life? Malpass did brilliantly to get it back to Kevin Marshall. And he trots in. Barkley was gaining, but he wasn't going to stop him. Marshall scores, and the Guardians will now trot home easily with the victory in hand. This game can change in a heartbeat. We said that before, we'll say it again. This game has been drastically different in two halves. That first half we've seen the ball going to ground, but unlike that last try where Shepard just picked it up, it was going to no one. The Scarlets were getting the ball back and it was all going downhill for the Guardians. It has since changed in 24-7. The scoreline does not reflect at all this story between the Guardians and the Scarlets. Half been a yellow card, Barkley yellow card. That was the changing of this matchup. <laughs> so Inglis gets it back from Crab and he's gone wide to Hunt. And Orwell's there again looking to put some danger. Here's Jones. Jones! Oh, wow. He is so hard to put away. And they've just managed to force a a single bit of his toe onto the sideline and Hughes will have a bit of possession a bit of ball for the Scarlets has been few and far between he just hits his man Price first time we said his name and now what can the Scarlets do they've got all their players back they go wide to McNichol who just now gets away from Elliot Malpass who puts in a pinpoint perfect tackle and Shotty McNichol not even him can create some magic here is Hunt, who's been heavily involved. Quickly down again to Lynch. Butler, full of confidence. Runs to the line and lose the ball. It is back now for Harpenny. Pops it back, no 
tries to get a ball. Hadley Parks charging into the 22. Go the Scarlets. Here is Jones. Wide. Barkley inside pass. Beautifully done too. And more opportunity now. Release. As it is Patchell taking the contact. They change their mind. Left and right. The ball four ball takes Release. its crown. Richard Smith was involved as well. Here he is again. Smith going left side. Parks. So many numbers out here. Lynch. Look at Ken Lynch go. Oh, what a tackle from Lynch. He has definitely saved a try there. Shingler. Back to Parks. Not releasing. Oh, what a penalty. That is magical. Who made that tackle for the Guardians? Was it Ollie Crabb? Not quite sure. With time all but up, the Guardians, oh, what a kick. Extraordinary kick from Don Butler. And after the Scarlets worked so hard to get into that position, Butler and the incredible work of the breakdown has shut it very quickly down. Here is Ollie Crabb. Was it him? Oh, it's another turnover. And away it goes. Henny Parks, desperate dive. And really saved the day there from Jake Waller. Pick and go from Boyd. The try scorer. Turnover ball. Marshall gets it back and Marshall knocks it on. Well, was that a signal of we've won? Who cares? But they've got to remember there was a bonus point on offer here if they wanted to. The Guardians. Only one more try required. How long do they play on here and try to secure something? Scarlett's coming wide and the referee says no. Just as it seems. Like Smith was going to try on around the outside of Kieran Jones. There is full time. And the Guardians, they pick up four points here for the victory over the Scarlets. Will it be enough to take that second spot? We'll have to check the tables out post-match. But wow. What a game we have witnessed here today. The final game of the round robin of the Global Rugby Challenge. The Scarlet started off on fire. The try to Boyd converted by half Benny right on the stroke of half time. Beautifully, sensationally set up, threading the needle by Patchell. Half time came, and then half time went. Second half kicked off, and two yellow cards ultimately changing this game. Butler opened up the penalty goal and then it was tries to Malpass, Guest and Marshall. Butler three out of three from the conversions as well to put them up 24 points to seven. Full-time stats and it was domination by the Guardians. Look at that possession, 76%. They really owned the second half as the Scarlets struggled to get any ball with only 13 men for a portion of that second half. Territory is still fairly close. The Guardians, they were hammering it from anywhere they could. Hanninger is much cleaner in the second half. Just two by the Guardians and one by Scarlett's pretty sure it was 6-2 at halftime. And line breaks really opened up in the second half. Nine for the Guardians as they closed out. A tidy win, but it looked a lot more hard than it was on the scoreboard. 24-7 looked like a bit of an easy cruise, but it certainly was it that if you watch the full full game the Guardians take the win let's go back and check out who will take that second spot on the table will it be the Dragons having a week off or will it be the Guardians of the Crib well we talked about it didn't we we talked about it last episode about the worst case scenario is that the Guardians win without a bonus point because it would leave three teams on 40 two points. And you know what's happened? We've got three teams on 42 points. Unbelievably. How has this happened? I tell you what it is. It's the draw. The All Flakes draw with Clermont and the fact that the Dragons and the Guardians both picked up six bonus points. Quite remarkable. Because the All Flakes won two of their subscriber clashes, but they drew a game. But they only got four bonus points, which that top up of the draw puts them. Uh, unbelievable. This is crazy. Absolutely crazy. We go into the playoffs now. We have quarterfinals, the game's calling them, but they're really preliminary finals. 
where our third through to sixth will play out. We'll have a look at the fixtures in just a second. But uh, you can see the All Flakes and the Guardians will be playing off. All Flakes you saw in the front screen there will face Toulon. The Guardians will face the Crusaders. Um, the Scarlet, who we just played down there on 15 points this season, is done and dusted. But the Celtic Dragons, I've got to give the Celtic Dragons a round of applause here. New team into the series. They battled. They really struggled. They lost two subscriber play, uh, subscriber matches, I should say. But they're still finished second. And for that, you've got to say full credit to them. I'm not sure how the game actually differentiates teams on equal points because everything seems to contradict how it will go down. Alphabetically, the All Flakes should be second. Now you can say, okay, points differential. But in that case, the Guardians should be first, or should be second, sorry. And then the Celtic Dragons third, and All Flakes fourth. You say, okay, so meetings between the two sides. Well, the All Flakes beat the Dragons last round, so straight away that eliminates that possibility. So how do they determine this order? Is it victories? Well, all three have nine. Losses? Then the All Flakes should be second. I'm perplexed as to why or how they decipher tie breaks like this. Most things lead to say the All Flakes should have picked up second, but they haven't. Either way you look at it, I mean, points differential should be the first equation which should have put the Guardians up to second. As it turns out, though, they've stayed down in fourth. I, I can't work it out. Uh, if you've got any idea as to how the game actually works out, uh, tiebreakers like this, do let me know in the comments below because nothing makes sense to me here at all with the three sides all on 42 points. Turns out, though, the way it's going to lie is the All Flakes versus Toulon, Guardians versus Crusaders. Then the Flakers will host... I'd imagine the All Flakes and the Dragons, I would imagine the Guardians. That could not be 100% true because what we've just seen, um, who knows how it's going to go down. That is, of course, provided that they win. I mean, that is not 100% yet either. So All Flakes still have to play too long. Guardians still have to play the Crusaders. Obviously, both those sides won their regular season matches and they are at home as well, which is all the merrier. I would like to see a rematch of the of the uh, Dragons versus the All Flakes, like we've seen up here. You saw a 21-14 win for the All Flakes, but I mean, all these sides are in a big circle, um, so no one is safe. I mean, even the Flakers lost one of their subscriber clashes. Out of interest, who did the uh, Flakers lose to? I think it was their second game of the subscriber clash. Yeah, there it is there. They lost, of course it was. It was to the Dragons. So there's a high possibility here that um, the grand final could be a rematch of that. Who knows? It could go any which way. You've seen how the uh, subscriber clashes go. It is AI controlled. From now on, it'll be the most influential players from throughout the season that will be playing in these games. Um, so it's the guys who have really stood up throughout the season Best teams that I think on paper should be playing in these games. So, um, really, it is a lottery now. These sides are so even. The All Flakes are in the Guardians still have that one AI game to play versus Toulon and the Crusaders. But that is it. That is a regular season done. What a season it has been as well. I hope you've all enjoyed the regular season of the Global Rugby Challenge. Hope you all stick around for the big games now. The... I'm, I'm still going to call the preliminary finals and the semi-finals and the final as well. So stay tuned for those coming up very, very soon. But of course, next video will be the final team of the round or team of the week for our round 11 where we have a look at uh, the best players from these three games. You see the Dragons, All Flakes, Flakers and Guardians up against Toulon and the Scarlets. Um... Who do you think has performed the best from those matches? Let me know in the comments below. And um, you can help shape the team of the week for round 11. Of course, it won't be a team of the week until we do the team of the season. 
So we're not going to have final team of the week players um, because this is going to delay the amazingness of the playoff games. We want to have a nice clean run through. Then we will have your final votes for team of the season. And then that team of the season will take on a world elite side from, um, from every nation, from every which way players come from as well. So the best of the best from the globe up against the best of the best from the subscriber sides. That is still a few matches away yet though, but it is the big ones. Playoffs, knockout, all flakes, guardians, the first ones to go up against the chopping block. Hope to see you all there for that one. Thank you for tuning in and watching and hope you've all enjoyed the regular season so far. Until next time, as always, take care.